Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about something that comes up a lot with female patients, and that is mood disorders, specifically anxiety, and how hormones could be playing a role. Um, if you are new to our channel, welcome. If you've been here for a while, you've been watching our videos, we really appreciate that. If you like the content that we're putting out, go ahead and share it with somebody that you um, think could benefit from it, because that's really our goal is just to help more women and get their questions answered because hormonal medicine, let's face it, it's not always done the best. And a lot of women go to doctor's offices and they're kind of given band-aid approaches or um, uh, oops, oh well, guess you're perimenopausal, too bad for you. And we think that's bad medicine. And so we want to educate people. Um, so moving on to our topic today, mood disorders in women and how hormones play a role. Unfortunately, this is something I see so often in my female patients. Actually, mood disorders are two times more common in women than men. And 80% of women report some sort of physical or mental emotional symptom around their period. That's a big number. More than that, right, we know that mood disorders um, and anxiety, which is partly what we're talking about today, increase in times of hormonal change. So puberty, pregnancy, perimenopause, and menopause. So we know hormones play a role. What's interesting to me though, is how many patients go into the doctor's office and your only option is an antidepressant, right? Your only option is an SSRI. And oftentimes that doesn't really help um, because it's not really treating the, the cause of what's going on. So today I wanna to specifically dive into female hormones. So when we're thinking about this, we're thinking progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. Testosterone is still a female hormone, even though it's an androgen. Um, and then in next week's video, we're gonna talk about some additional hormones that we might wanna think about if we have anxiety. So if you have anxiety, stay tuned for next week's video because you're gonna to wanna to watch that. Um, so let's start with progesterone. This is the most common hormone that we think about with anxiety, right? A lot of practitioners will talk about the fact that anxiety does tend to increase in the second half of the cycle. Um, and with PMSA specifically, we usually see low progesterone as kind of a cause for that. Um, with progesterone, what's important to think about is that the metabolism of progesterone really matters. So we metabolize our progesterone in two ways. We either go to beta pregnandiol or alpha pregnandiol. And the most important part of this is that the alpha pregnandiol crosses the blood brain barrier and stimulates GABA receptors in the brain. So GABA, calm, right? Anti-anxiety. Um, so we do think about progesterone as being helpful for that. If progesterone is a um, tool that we're using with patients, you want to consider oral progesterone for anxiety concerns because it tends to metabolize more to that alpha pregnant dial and allows it to cross the blood brain barrier. So um, progesterone we have talked about a little bit with anxiety in the past. Today I want to talk about estrogen and testosterone. So case wise, I have seen female hormones play the biggest role in anxiety. I have a patient who actually I can list off like five patients right now in my head that um, came to me with worsening anxiety around that perimenopausal phase. Um, and they, it was kind of like this low grade buzz that they experienced all the time, but it was really quite altering to their life. And testosterone was what solved that case. Um, I had a patient who had a severe sleep issue at one point um, and a lot of anxiety regarding kind of surrounding that case and testosterone we did a number of things and she was getting better but it was testosterone that really tipped the needle for her and she came in as like a completely different person um so i want to dive into a little bit of the reason why we're thinking of this so let's do estrogen first then we'll do testosterone so estrogen has some really interesting kind of research studies surrounding it some really interesting ideas surrounding it so the first thing to think about is that higher levels of estrogen are associated with higher levels of serotonin now we're talking primarily about anxiety, but mood disorders play a role, right? And oftentimes depression and anxiety come coupled as like nice little, wonderful, awful pair. Um, and we know that higher levels of estrogen are associated with higher levels of serotonin, which is higher levels of that happy, calm feeling that we're looking for. Other interesting research comes out of the field of PTSD. So what some studies have shown is that women are more likely to suffer from PTSD symptoms at periods in the cycle where estrogen is the lowest. If we don't have pregnancy that happens, estrogen and progesterone dip off and then they're lowest in that first part of the cycle when you're on your period. And this is why anxiety and mental emotional concerns can really rise in that time. The other thing with estrogen is that 
higher levels of estrogen have been shown to help women with their fear and startle response, being that women tend to startle less if their estrogen is higher. A lot of anxiety has to do with our stress response in terms of hormones and our stress hormones that are created when we have anxiety and when we have worry. Um, and estrogen has been shown to help with that startling and help with that anxiety. So that's something to consider. Moving on to testosterone. So like I said, I have seen testosterone be a main contributor in a number of anxiety cases. Um, testosterone has some really interesting research behind it. It's funny because it's one of those things where like everything, right? You can find studies that say for and studies that say against, but the clinical evidence on testosterone really shows that if it's well dosed in women, it contributes to a sense of well-being and it contributes to way less anxiety. A 2009 study showed that a low dose application of testosterone greatly impacted women in terms of lowering major depressive disorder. A 2000 study looked at how the removal of the ovaries increased mood disorders and anxiety dramatically, something that we don't like to tell women about, um, and that testosterone actually helped to reverse those symptoms. And then a 2006 study showed that one single dose of testosterone greatly impacted women's fear startle response, which actually came up with estrogen as well. Um, there's some interesting kind of thoughts around this surrounding the male brain, right? Because when we have higher levels of testosterone, we will convert some of that into estrogen through aromatization. And so there's a little bit of a thought that the brain in men actually uh, will convert some of that testosterone into estrogen, which makes men's brains tend to be a little bit more kind of like stable hormonally versus the fluctuations that women have um, and why anxiety and mood disorders show up significantly less in men. And then finally, a 2003 study showed that a single transdermal, so just a cream, dose of testosterone greatly impacted mood and um, anxiety in women, benefiting both. What is important to think about is that a 2002 study showed that having too much testosterone will actually have the opposite effect and could actually bring on episodes of major, major depressive disorder. I've talked about this a lot in the past on my channel, um, but I think that testosterone in women is either done awesome or is done completely awfully. And I see a lot of women who are really overdosed. Um, that can definitely impact mood in women, right? Because we do see that irritability, we see an increase in depression, but when we're dosing hormones at a responsible level, we can really impact a woman's well-being um, and really help with things like anxiety and depression. So I bring this up because a lot of women go in and maybe they're in that perimenopausal phase, right? And they have had maybe some mood disorders at certain times in their life. Usually it shows up postpartum and then it'll kind of come back again. Um, and they're being told to go on an SSRI. Um, well, an antidepressant might help, right? I'm not saying that's a bad treatment strategy, but if hormonal um, concerns are contributing, and we know that hormones play a big role in other aspects of well-being, being more of that physical aspect of well-being and longevity, and they help with our brain and mood, it's a serious thing to consider um, when we're looking at labs. Like I said, in next week's video, we're gonna talk about some of the um, other hormones that we think about when it comes to anxiety um, that might not come up quite as much, but if you are suffering from anxiety, hormones could be playing a huge role, especially if you're cycling and you're noticing that you're seeing those shifts at different times of your cycle. That's a big cue for us. Um, or if you're hitting that like perimenopausal and menopausal phase and your mood is completely different. Um, stay tuned next week for next week's video.